dear. Your call, please. Operator, I've been dialing Muriel Hill for 0098 now for the last three quarters of an hour and the line is always busy, but I don't see how it could be busy that long. Will you try it for me, please? Muriel Hill for 0098. One moment, please. I don't see how it could be busy all the time. It's my husband's office. He's working late tonight and I'm all alone here in the house. My health is very poor and I'm really feeling so nervous all day. Ringing. Muriel Hill for... 0098 Hello? 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 Hello, hello? Hello? Hello, George? Yes, sir. Hello, who's this? What number I'm calling, please? We are here from our client. He says the coast is clear for tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, where are you now? In the phone booth. Okay, you know the address. At 11 o'clock, the private patrolman goes around to the bar on 2nd Avenue for beer. Be sure that all the lights downstairs are out. There should be only one light visible from the street. At 11.15, a subway train crosses the bridge. It makes a noise in case her window is open and she should scream. Oh, hello. What number is this, please? Okay, I understand. Make it quick. As little blood as possible. Because our client does not wish to make her suffer long. Ken, can I use a knife, sir? Yes, a knife will be okay. And remember, remove the rings and bracelets and the jewelry in the bureau drawer. Our client wishes it to look like simple robbery. Okay, I get it. Oh, how awful. How unspeakable. Your call, please. Operator, I, I've just been cut off. I'm sorry, madam. What number were you calling? Why, it was supposed to be more a hill for 0098, but it wasn't. Some words may have crossed. I was caught into a wrong number, and I just heard the most dreadful thing. Uh, a murder and operator. You'll simply have to retrace that call at once. I beg your pardon, madam. I don't quite... Oh, I know. It was a wrong number, and I had no business listening. But these two men, they were cold-blooded fiends. Some poor innocent woman who was alone in a house near a bridge. And we got to stop them. We got to. What number were you calling, madam? It doesn't matter. This was a wrong number. And you dial it. And we got to find it what it was immediately. But, but madam. Oh, why are you so stupid? Look, it was obviously a case of some little slip of the finger. I told you to try more I hope for 0098. For me, you dial it, but your finger must have slipped. And I was connected with some other number, and I could hear them, but they can hear me now. Now, I simply to see why you can make that same mistake again, on purpose. Why you can try to dial Murray Hill for 0098 in the same careless sort of way. Murray Hill for 0098? I will try to get that for you, madam. Thank you. I'm sorry, Murray Hill for 0098 is busy. Operator? Operator? Yes, madam. You didn't try to get a wrong number at all. I asked explicitly, and all you did was dial correctly. I'm sorry. What number were you calling? Can't you for once forget number I was calling and do something specific? Now, I want to trace that call. It's my civic duty. It's your civic duty to trace that call and to apprehend those dangerous killers. And if you want... I will connect you with the chief operator. Please. This is the chief operator. Chief operator, I want you to trace a call, a telephone call immediately. I don't know where it came from or who was making it, but it's absolutely necessary that to be tracked on because it was about a murder. Yes, a terrible cold-blooded murder of a poor innocent woman tonight at 11.15. I see. Can you trace it for me? Can you track down this man? It depends, madam. Depends on what? Depends on whether the call is still going on. If it's still a live call, we can trace it on the equipment. If it's been disconnected, 
We can't. Disconnected? If the parties stop talking to each other. Oh, but, but of course they must have talking to each other by now. That was at least five minutes ago, and they didn't sound like the type who would make a long call. Well, I could try tracing it. Now, what is your name, madam? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson, but... Aha, uh -huh. and your telephone number? Plaza 42295, but if you go on wasting all this time... And what is your reason for wanting this call, Trace? My reason? Well, for heaven's sake, isn't it obvious? I heard over two men, they're killers. They're planning to murder this woman. It's a matter for the police. Have you told the police? No, how could I? You're making this check into a private call purely as a private individual? Yes, but meanwhile... Well, Mrs. Stevenson, I seriously doubt whether we could make this check for you at this time just on your say-so. As a private individual, we'd have to have something more official. Oh, for heaven's sake! Oh, you meant to tell me I can even report a murder without getting tied up in all this red tape? Why? It's perfectly idiotic. All right then, I will call the police. Ridiculous! Your call, please. The police department, please. Ringing the police department. Police Department, Precinct 43, Love is speaking. Police Department, this is Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Smite Stevenson of 53 North Southern Place. I'm calling to report a murder. Eh? I mean, the murder hasn't been committed yet. I just overheard plans for it over the telephone. Over wrong number that operator gave me. I've been trying to trace down the call myself, but everybody is so stupid. And I guess you're the only person who could do anything. Yes, ma'am. It was a perfectly definite murder. I heard their plans distinctly. Two men were talking and they were going to murder some woman at 11.15 tonight. She lived in house near a bridge. Yes, ma'am. And there was a private patrolman on the street. He was going to around forever on 2nd Avenue. And there was some third man, a client, who was paying to have this poor woman murdered. They were going to take her rings and bracelet. I knew a knife. Well, it's a never me dreadfully and I'm not well. I see. Uh, when was all this, ma'am? About eight minutes ago. Oh, then you can do something. You do understand. And what is your name, ma'am? Mrs. Stevenson, Mrs. Albert Stevenson. And your address? 53 North Southern Place, that's near a bridge. The Queensborough Bridge, you know, we have a private patrolman on our street. And what was the number we're calling? Murray Hill 4098, but... That wasn't the number I overheard. I mean, Mora Hill for 0098 is my husband's office. He's working late tonight, and I was trying to reach him to come home. And I'm in Bali, you know. And it's the maid's night off, and I hate to be alone. Even though he says I'm perfectly safe as long as I have the telephone right beside my bed. Well, we'll look into it, Mrs. Stevenson, and uh, see if you can check it with the telephone company. But a telephone company said they can check the call if the parties have stopped talking. I've been taking care of that. Oh, yes? Personally, I feel I ought to do something far more immediate and drastic than check the call. But who's checking the call do if they stop talking? By the time we track it down, they already have committed the murder. Well, we'll take care of it, lady. Don't worry. I'd say the whole thing for a search, a complete and true search of the wall city. I'm burning near a bridge and I'm not far from 2nd Avenue and I know I'd feel a whole lot better if you send a radio car to this neighborhood at once. And what makes you think the murder's going to be committed in your neighborhood, ma'am? Oh, I don't know. This coincidence is so horrible. 2nd Avenue, the patrolman, the bridge. 2nd Avenue is a long street, ma'am. And do you happen to know how many bridges there are in the city of New York alone? Not to mention Brooklyn, Staten Land, Queens, and the Bronx. And how do you know there isn't some little house out on Staten Land? On some little 2nd Avenue you've never heard about. How do you know they were even talking about 
New York at all. But I heard the call on the New York dialing system. How do you know it wasn't a long distance call you overheard? Cell phones are funny things. Look, lady, why don't you look at this way? Supposing you had been broken on that telephone call. Supposing you got your hazard the way you always do. Would this murder have made any difference to you then? I suppose not, but it's so inhuman, so cold-blooded. A lot of murders are committed in this city every day, ma'am. If we could do something to stop them, we would. But a clue of this kind that's so vague isn't much more use to us than no clue at all. But surely... Unless... Of course... You have some reason for taking this call pony. And that someone may be planning to murder you. Me? Oh no. I hardly think so. I mean... Why should anybody? I'm alone day and night. I see nobody except my maid, Eloise. She's a big 200 pounder. She's the laser bring up my breakfast tray, and the only other person is my husband, Albert. He's crazy about me, adores me, waits my hand and foot. He's scarcely left my side since I took sick 12 years ago. Well, then there's nothing for you to worry about, is there? And now, if you'll just leave the rest to us. What will you do? It's so late. It's nearly 11 o'clock. Well, take care of it, lady. Will you broadcast it all over the city and send out squads? And wire your radio cars to watch out, especially in suspicious neighbors like mine? Lady, I said we take care of it. Just now, I've got a couple of other matters here on my desk that require my immediate. Oh! Idiot! Now! Why did I do that? Now, you think I'm a fool? Oh, why doesn't Albert come home? Why doesn't he? Your call, please. Operator, for heaven's sake, will you ring that Mora Hill for 0098 again? I can't think what's keeping him so long. Ringing Murray Hill for 0098. The line is busy. Shall I? I can hear it. You don't have to tell me. I know it's busy. If I could only get out of this bed for a little while. If I could get a breath of fresh air. Or just lean out of the window and see the street. Hello? Albert? Hello? 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 Oh, what's the matter with this phone? Hello? 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 Oh, for heaven's sake, who is this? Hello? 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 Your call, please. Hello, operator. I don't know what's the matter with this telephone tonight, but positively driving me crazy. I never such an efficient, miserable service. Now, look, I am invalid and I'm very nervous and I am not supposed to be annoyed. But if this keeps on much longer... What seems to be the trouble, madam? Well, everything's wrong. The whole world could be murdered. For all you people care. And now my phone keeps ringing. Yes, madam. Ringing and ringing and ringing. Every five seconds or so. And when I pick it up, there's no one there. I'm sorry, madam. If you will hang up, I will test it for you. I don't want you to test it for me. I want you to put through that call whatever it is at once. I am afraid that is not possible, madam. Not possible? And why, may I ask? The system is automatic, madam. If someone is trying to dial a number, there is no way to check whether the call is coming through, the system or not, unless the person who is trying to reach you complains to his particular operator. Well, of all the stupid, complicated, and meanwhile, I've got to sit here in my bed, suffering every time that the phone rings. I will try to check it for you, madam. Check it, check it, that's all anybody can do. Of all the stupid, idiotic. Oh, what's the use? Hello? 
Hello? Stop ringing. Do you hear me? Answer me. What do you want? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Hello? Is this Plaza 42295? Yes. Yes. This is Plaza 42295. This is Western Union. I have a telegram here for Mrs. Albert Stevenson. Is there anyone there to receive the message? I am Mrs. Stevenson. The telegram is as follows. Mrs. Albert Stevenson, 53 North Sutton Place, New York, New York. Darling, terribly sorry. Try to get you for last hour, but line busy. Leaving for Boston 11 p.m. Tonight an urgent business. Back tomorrow afternoon. Keep happy. Love, signed, Albert. Oh, no. That is all, madam. Do you wish us to deliver a copy of the message? No. No, thank you. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night. No, no, it isn't true. He can do it. Now when he knows I'd be all alone. It's some trick. So friendish. Your call, please. Operator, try that more hill for your nine eight number. For me, just one word, please. Ringing Marai Hill four zero zero nine eight. <laughs> He's gone. Oh, Albert, how could you? How could you? <laughs> but I can't be alone tonight. I can't if I'm all alone. One more second. I don't care what he says or what the expense is. I'm sick, woman. I'm entitled. This is information. I want a telephone number of Henshley Hospital. Henshley Hospital? Do you have the address, madam? No, it's somewhere in the 70s though. It's a very small private and exclusive hospital where I had my appendix done out two years ago. Henshley, H-E-N-C. One moment, please. Please hurry. And please, what is the time? I do not know, madam. You may find out the time by dialing Meridian 71212. Oh, for heaven's sake, couldn't you? The number of Henshley Hospital is Butterfield 70105, madam. Butterfield 70105. Henshley Hospital, good evening. There's this registry. Who was it you wish you speak to, please? I want the nurse's registry at once. I want the trainers. I want to hire her immediately, for the night. I see. And what is the nature of the case, madam? Nerds, I'm very nervous. I need soothing and companionship. My husband is away and I'm... Have you been recommended to us by any doctor in particular, madam? No. But I really don't see why all this catechizing is necessary. I want the trainers. I was a patient in your hospital two years ago. And after all, I do expect to pay this person. We quite understand that, madam. But registered nurses are very scarce just now. And our superintendent has asked us to send people out only on cases where the physician in charge feels it is absolutely necessary. Well, it is absolutely necessary. I'm a sick woman. And... I, I am very absent, very. I'm alone in this house, and I'm invalid. And tonight, I overheard a telephone conversation that upset me dreadfully about a murder, a poor woman who is going to be murdered at 11.15 tonight. And in fact, if someone doesn't come at once, I'm afraid I'll go out of my mind. I see. Well, I'll speak to Miss Phillips as soon as she comes in. And what is your name, madam? 
Miss Phillips, and when do you expect her in? I really don't know, madam. She went out to supper at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? But it's not 11 yet. Oh, the clock has stopped. I thought it was running down. What time is it? Just 40 minutes past 11. What's that? What was that, madam? That, that click just now. In my own telephone, as though someone had lifted the receiver of the hook of the extension phone downstairs. I didn't hear it, madam. Now, about this. But, I did! There's someone in this house, someone downstairs in the kitchen, and, uh, and they're listening to me now. They're... I won't pick it up. I won't let them hear me. I'll be quiet, and they think... But if I don't call someone now, while they're still down there, there'll be no time. Your call, please, operator. I... I'm in desperate trouble. I... I cannot hear you, madam. Please speak louder. I don't... There, there, there's someone listening. Can you hear me now? Your call, please. What number are you calling, madam? You've got to hear me. Oh, please. You've got to help me. There's someone in this house. Someone who's going to murder me. And you got to touch with a... Oh, there it is. Let's put it down. Let's put down the extension. It's coming. It's coming up the upstairs. Give me the police department. The police! Ringing the police department. Oh no, please. Oh no. Please! Police Department, Prison 43, Duffy speaking. Police Department, Duffy speaking. Sorry, wrong number. 